Hello and welcome to episode 7 of my sports and exercise science series. We're going to be following on from episode 6 by learning about four new topics. These include the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs. The nervous system is a term we use to describe the entire network made up of all the neurons in the body. Remember, a neuron is a single cell that carries electrical impulses and a collection of these are found in nerves. All the nerves in your body collectively are called your nervous system. The nervous system can be divided into two main parts, which are the central and peripheral nervous systems. The central nervous system, or CNS, consists of the brain and spinal cord. The PNS, or peripheral nervous system, consists of the nerves that branch out from the CNS to the rest of the body. The central nervous system is mostly made up of relay or intermediate neurons which act to send signals between other neurons and connect them together in different networks. Eventually these signals will get to longer neurons and they will eventually be sent to an effector or receptor. In short, relay neurons do as the name suggests. They relay messages and are intermediate so they are in between neurons. The peripheral nervous system is slightly different as it acts as the interface between the central nervous system and the environment. So what does this mean? Well, the peripheral nervous system communicates things from the environment towards the central nervous system and it sends things out from the central nervous system to parts of the body that interact with the environment. The peripheral nervous system is made up of motor and sensory neurons. Sensory neurons take information from a sensory organ or receptors towards the central nervous system where it can then be processed as information. Motor neurons take information away from the central nervous system to effectors. Let's recap all of that. Receptors, which are at the beginning of the sensory neurons, take information from the environment and once this is processed by the central nervous system, motor neurons send instructions to effectors such as muscles and glands. Let's now move on to muscle spindles. Here is a picture of the bicep. We can see the muscle here and the tendon here. The muscle spindle resides in the muscle belly lying parallel to the muscle fibers. Their role is to sense changes in joint position, muscle length and muscle tension. Let's say I'm personal training a client. It's at the end of a session and I'm performing a hamstring stretch on the client. If I was to go to the very limit of my client's stretch tolerance, the central nervous system would initiate a muscular contraction to prevent the muscle being stretched any further and potentially being injured. This occurs in the spinal cord rather than being processed higher up in the brain and is called a stretch reflex. The stretch reflex is also activated if a stretch is done too quickly. Let's take the hamstring stretch example again. If my client's range of motion is 90 degrees and I suddenly stretch the hamstring very quickly to 80 degrees, although I'm not at the client's maximum stretch, the rate of speed and force can cause the muscle to contract as a protective mechanism. Muscle spindles also cause reciprocal inhibition. Reciprocal inhibition is where the muscle spindle will activate the muscle that is working. For example, in a bicep curl movement, you're activating and working the bicep primarily. However, the muscle spindle will also inhibit the antagonist muscle. In this case, it's the triceps. Not only will the muscle spindle make the bicep contract, it will also make the triceps relax. Why does this happen though? Well, this is to allow the biceps not to have to fight their antagonist muscle and to allow for ease of movement. The bicep wants to flex the elbow and the tricep wants to extend it. They both can't work at the same time, so during a bicep curl, to allow the bicep to perform this movement, the tricep relaxes. This is called inhibition because it's inhibiting the triceps and it's reciprocal because it's inhibiting the reciprocal muscle, also known as the antagonist. Finally, we have the Golgi tendon organs or otherwise known as GTOs. GTOs are found close to the junction between the tendon and the muscle. The function of GTOs are to monitor tension within a muscle and they are activated to override or inhibit the stretch reflex. Remember, tendons do not actually get shorter or longer because they do not have muscle fibers. Instead, they react to the amount of tension. Let's take the hamstring stretch analogy again. I've slowly stretched my client up to their maximum stretch. Again, let's say this is 90 degrees and the muscle spindles contract. If I stay in this position, 
after 10 seconds, the inverse stretch reflex will take place. This simply means that GTOs cause the muscle that's been in a state of contraction to relax again. This also means that the muscle can be stretched slightly further. The inverse stretch reflex is activated by the central nervous system, which tells the body that there is not a risk of injury. Athletes do this type of stretching, known as developmental stretching, and they will stretch until muscle spindles are activated and then hold until the GTOs generate the inverse stretch reflex and relax. Once the athlete is pushed into the next point of stretch, muscle spindles activate once again and the stretch reflex is triggered. Often this process is repeated for three to four times. Let's now look at another example. Let's say I'm in the gym and I'm doing bicep curls. The weight I've picked is really heavy and I start doing a bicep curl and at halfway during contraction, I'm struggling to complete the rest of the repetition. The GTOs sense the tension and realize that the amount of force is too high. What do you think the GTOs would do in this example? After a few seconds, to protect the body from possible rupture or injury, the GTOs will inhibit the muscle tendon unit that's carrying the load of the dumbbell that I'm lifting. This in turn makes it weaker to decrease the amount of tension and my arm will drop back down. You may have seen this example in the gym where somebody gets halfway through a repetition, they're pushing as hard as they can, then all of a sudden the weight drops down or they can't complete the repetition. This is called autogenic inhibition, Autogenic meaning self, and inhibition meaning it's inhibiting the muscle tendon unit that it's in. That concludes the seventh episode of my sports and exercise science series. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and don't forget to like and subscribe for more free and educational content. You've been watching UK Fitness Hub, I've been Travis Tarrant, and I'll see you in the next episode where we begin study on energy production and systems.